vegetable for a little <laughs> pasta soup. <laughs> I'm Don, also known as Nitten Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm James, also known as Wolf Photo. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Wolf Farms. You can find us on the internet at wolffarms.net. Uh, thank you to uh, new viewers for joining us today, and thank you for the returning viewers for coming and watching us again. Um, I just wanted to make mention, every month we have a scent of the month, and this month is uh, World's Best Coffee. So anything scented in World's Best Coffee scent, our candles, lotion, soap, bath salts, uh, they're all 25% off this month, so um, great to stock up if you like that, and you know, so... Just wanted to point that out to you. Yeah. Hey, do I hear a... Uh, Is that Farmer Jim? I think we hear Farmer Jim yeah. coming. Wonder what he's bringing for us today. Oh my goodness. One of the baby turkeys. Yes. Hey. Here's Mad-Eye. Hi, Mad-Eye. <laughs> Remember when they were just yay big? Well, look how big they've gotten. And uh, I think he's in the about two months old now. Oop. He wants to perch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's getting really big. Uh, well, it's okay. We're gonna talk. You don't normally. Like to yeah. He's kind of freaking out now. Yeah, yeah he's no, camera shy. So, all right. Well, thanks for bringing in Mad Eye. But look how big they've gotten. And uh, yeah, I think he's about what two months old now. Yeah, mm -hmm. eight weeks. So. Look how big yeah, they've more gotten. Than eight weeks. It's about ten. Oh, is it? Ten or eleven. Yeah. So they they grew uh, <laughs> they grow fast. And uh, thanks, Farmer Jim. We'll let you get Mad Eye back into his yeah. uh, coop, but that and him back to the Wow game. Yeah, back to back to his uh, computer. Yeah. So, but uh, well, we had Farmer Jim show you uh, Mad Eye our turkey, uh, and we have. Uh, what are they? Blue. It's a blue slate turkey. Blue slate. God, my yeah. off today. Yeah. <laughs> Hang in there. She's recovering from dental uh, stuff, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But I want to segue over into, uh, we got Randy's uh, new palace all put together and in place, and he's got his new uh, pen area all set up. We moved him over there a couple days ago, so... We want. We got a little bit of video of showing showing you Randy and and some of the the things that he does. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and cut over to that, and uh, we'll see you outside. Hey, well, we're out here visiting Randy's new area here on the farm. We got. Uh, hey, Randy. He's he's excited because we got some treats for him, and he's such a well-behaved pig. He'll he'll sit for his treats. So. He's a, he's a Vietnamese he pot belly pig, and he's about a year and a half now. And when they're happy, this whole part right here will stand up. That and he will wiggle his tail. Oh, yeah, Mabel. I'll sit like a good pig. Yes, you so good pig. <laughs> Yeah, so he's been out here for a couple days now. I finally got the uh, area all fenced up and got his uh, pig chateau or his pig palace, so to speak, and uh, out here. So this is his finished pig palace with siding and all. It matches our house, which is yellow with white trim, and we have siding on our house, so we put siding on on his as well and I built a little shader because the sun gets pretty strong in the summertime here so we got a I threw up a little shader for him he's got a swimming pool which he gets into and some bushes we got to wait for those to get grown but but uh, yeah, he's just <laughs> he's not gonna listen he just he just wants to eat he knows treats but yeah, he's he's a good guy. He's like a two-year-old kid. He, he has about the same patience and mentality as a two-year-old. So, but they do love their belly rubbed. I'm gonna, I'll be demonstrating that because he does that better for me. But he'll lay down and loves to get his belly rubbed. So. When you rub the side of their bellies, they will actually fly.
flop over like this and just let you rub their belly and this is actually how we uh, get him relaxed to do his uh, hooves. He'll let you handle his feet. It helps, it helps when you uh, fatten him up with some <laughs> treats first because then he really relaxes. Hey Randy. Real good piggy. Real good piggy. Yeah, we'll get some sun on this so you can, you can see. Yeah. Look at the hair on the back of his neck yeah. rise. He's, he's, he likes this a lot. <laughs> Another thing he likes doing is rubbing against the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> I'll see if we can't get him to do that after we... Good boy, Randy. How about him up and I'll let you rub on my shoe. Here, hey, right here. Right there. Come on. Oh, there we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. Ooh, yeah, I gotta yeah. take an old boot and put it on a board for him because he'll sit here and. <laughs> <laughs> this could be quite entertaining. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> welcome back. You get to see some of Randy's tricks and, and his new uh, piggy palace there. His new digs. Yeah, yeah, so. Because uh, he likes to dig too. That's another, we didn't mention that out there. We should have had something oh, wet. Oh, yeah. Because if there's any kind of dampness, he will dig with his nose. His nose is very, very strong. Yeah, it's strong. When he bumps up against, he will like nose me and I will get bruised wherever. I mean, because it is like yeah, a brick it, wall. Yeah, he, he can actually dig up dirt with his nose. Yeah. And that's what he'll do, is, especially if it's soft, he'll go through and it looks like a farmer trying like to, to till the field <laughs> with his nose. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's got a much bigger area than he was in before. And uh, he's got a bigger house. And, and so I think he'll be... he's a bigger boy. Yeah, he's a bigger boy. So mm -hmm. so anyway, so he got an opportunity to see the, the pig palace. Piggy palace. Piggy yeah. palace and... Uh, and he's quite happy to be out there, so. Yep. And Sadie's doing a little update on her. She's doing a lot better. She, we found some food that she's liking, the Caesar wet food and some other kind of wet food, yeah. so. And she's getting a lot more comfortable being here. She yeah. wags her tail, and she's, she, she seems when genuinely. When I got home, she <laughs> <laughs> all excited. And yeah, so. she, she genuinely seems happy now to be here. Yeah. I mean, when we first got her, she seemed very skittish about everything. And nowadays, she's much more, she just seems very comfortable. And she'll come out, and, you know, again, she's just happy to, to be around. Mm -hmm. So she, she's still got it's a little time, bit of the, yeah. the stuff to work on. She's still skittish um, in some cases, but At you can tell there's, it's, improvement. there's improvement. Yeah. So yeah, there's been quite a bit in the last two weeks. So, so since she's but, been a little bit more relaxed, we're going to be going and having a vet check and everything this week and her yeah. rabies shots. And yeah, get her all, <laughs> get her all up to, up to date on everything. Yeah. So so I wanted to answer another one of our, because we have a lot of questions in our 3,000 member contest mm -hmm. thread. And I wanted to, even though that is over, I wanted to still address some of the questions. And I can't see me talking <laughs> with my hands. I saw you looking at that. I, you want me to sign? I can sign the whole thing. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the question was what needles I prefer. And as you get to knitting, you will get to see which ones you prefer. I don't have a set, Fuji, set one that I love. I mean, I love my signatures, but one of the reasons is you got me these on my birthday. So that's, a, you know, that makes it's them more sentiment, special. Sentimental. Sentimental, because I, yeah, I'm very sentimental. Um, I've always had the nitpicks interchangeables. I have the wooden and I have the nickel plated. Those, I love the points. I love how the cords on them, but with them being interchangeable, they unscrew no mm. matter if I use the interlocking thing or not. Uh, one thing I do got to say about nitpicks when that 
because if you get nitpicks, the cable is going to break. Just be aware, it will break, but their customer service is excellent. I mean, you call them up, even if it's double points, and they will replace them. Yeah, very I know quickly. you haven't had any issues with that. I need to call about my size ones again, too, because <laughs> those ones always bust on me. Yeah. And uh, so those I use a lot because I they're more what I have. The Chiagus, I have some of those, or Chiagu, if you want to say it correctly. But uh, the cable is very... I don't like knitting magic looping with those. The is cable that the real is, stiff one? Yeah, with okay. the really metal cable in it. The cable on the signatures sticks to me. That's the only thing I don't like about these. Because mm. when you have a big project on here, it uh, sketches. It it binds up, so you mm -hmm. have to, like when you're right here, you have to scoot your work. So that's one thing I don't care for. The, the nitpicks, what's the ones called that they're uh, not interchangeable? Fixed. Wonderful. I haven't had any problems with those. So, yeah. um, Addies, I have three pairs now. I love them. There's not a thing on the Addy that I don't love. The Addy Lace and the normal Addies. Just, but I did my newer pair that I just got when we were on the yarn crawl. Mm -hmm. I was knitting with those yesterday, and I'm like, oh, what is that <laughs> smell? And you do smell a coppery smell. Now, my ones that I got like 10 years ago, they don't smell. Are those the plated ones that you have? They're, the, they're still the bronze. Uh, Bronze, but, but they don't they smell. Don't, you don't get that copper. Mm -mm. So. Well, I know when we were on the yarn call, you looked at the Addy Turbo uh, interchangeable clicks, kit that yeah. they click in, and so they won't unscrew. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if they sell those individually or just as a kit, because I, I know you right have certain. I know you yeah. have certain sizes you use a lot, so you have a lot of projects on those, and then you know, yeah, some four, five, sizes you never or, use. Yeah. So. But I know that uh, we had talked about that when we were on the yarn crawl about how the uh, the nitpicks would unscrew on you all the time. And I looked at those to try and see if there's a way to kind of lock them in, but they, you know, it's... Now, I also have a pair of the collage, which are the square needles. I dislike the cable on those tremendously. It is so blow It's just <laughs> wiggly. It's like knitting with a piece of spaghetti. Um, I, I dislike there's... it all. Your gauge is off with the square needles too. Oh. You get a total different gauge. Hmm. So I never use those. I used them once when I bought them. Just but yeah, no. Uh, Haya Hayas I haven't worked with, so I can't give my opinion about those. But hmm. my signature double points. And my Blackthorn double points. I, I love both of those. Super, super pointy. The only thing with that is knitting a long time. I'm a pusher. And so I get a hole <laughs> literally in my finger. You know, where you push yeah, it. I know your Blackthorn yeah. will really get to you because they're so pointy. Yeah. And... So that's just... I don't have a set... Like, ooh, that's, I will only use signatures, or really it's whatever's left. <laughs> you know, whatever isn't on a project, or, yeah. you know. Now, with the Harmony interchangeable knit picks, that's the colored wood. That is very hard if your project matches the wood. Oh, trying to find yeah. your... Yeah, so you really want something that's light, or... That's gen you know, I will try to shy away from those for that reason. But and Darker yarns don't work good with them. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to... They, they look neat. From a, I'm a woodworker, pretty, so I like yeah. the laminated wood uh, blend, you know, from a but yeah, woodworker they're nice standpoint. they to work but... with. And then for a crochet hook, I wasn't going to get into this, but uh, my grandma always knit with these little plastic ones. So that's what she would give me since that's who taught me. I would snap them to, <laughs> into pieces. I don't like knitting with the metal needles. I don't like knitting. I don't like crocheting with metal hooks. I detest it. I just, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And so he found me Brittany Birch. I don't even know if they're in business anymore, but they're very ornate, mm -hmm. gorgeous 
crochet hooks, and I haven't busted those. <laughs> those. I are think they're made out of bamboo. So they're no, that's not. It's Brittany Birch tree. Oh, Bert. Yeah. That light color. Sorry. So, yep, those are my my preferred needles. I have no preferred needles yet. <laughs> <laughs> Being a new. Uh, Knitter, I, I haven't found You've my niche. The... I get the cheapo needles that <laughs> aren't on her projects because they're the cheapo needles. But but hey, they work for me. So yep. no preference. Just just in case yes. you're wondering, his I next, don't have a... his next projects. I get he's to use using the good the stuff. signatures. We'll get to that. Yeah. But I, I'm going to use the good stuff now. So she's going to spoil me. Yeah. So that's just a brief uh, little. Adjusting. <laughs> Answer to one of the yeah. questions. So, okay. Well. That that one you didn't realize that you know I thought it'd be a lot quicker. I could just go on and yeah, on and on. And it's just like rambling July out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's so, get on to your you uh, farm. Oh my my diet coke shirt for uh, I'm doing this for uh, Lauren's benefit of the Limnet uh, yeah. Crochet podcast. She'll know what we're talking about. So mm. diet coke. <laughs> so farm happenings well you, we, we saw the pig palace mm -hmm. we saw that uh, I think there was a question about how about our, our new geese how big they'll actually get so. yeah they they're African gray mm -hmm. they're a, a uh, they're not uh, full yeah, yeah they're, they're part not Toulouse and part African gray yeah they're actually a, a blend but yeah. they but will get up to be 28 pounds yeah they'll actually be on par with the turkeys because the turkeys will get about that large yeah. as well the blue slate so we'll, um they'll be about the same size weight wise but the turkeys will actually be broader yeah and stouter and the geese will be more um uh, elongated they'll, they're more of a uh, uh they fly so they have to be able to have that body so not here they don't no because they like it here. They like it at Wolf Farms. <laughs> they know where the food is. <laughs> all right. Well, is that all the farm happens? I yeah. That's, 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 yeah, I worked sure on Randy. Fr yeah. Friday was my getting Randy into his new area. So that was that pretty much took up all my day. Okay. So in the coop. In the coop. In the coop. <sighs> where to start? Yeah, I didn't have. I didn't do too much knitting this week because I had... Yeah, that's kind of back to the farm happenings, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I had a dental procedure, a two-hour full working on me dental procedure. And so, lots of makeup on today. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been kind of... You've been in pain yeah. since Thursday. and Yeah, I popped more Advil before we recorded. Ice packs, you know, yeah. just the... It's been a rough couple days, so... And she won't listen to me to where she just sits and relaxes. She still wants to stay busy. So yeah. I'm like thinking how much knitting you can get done if you're just sitting there. I never sit. Yeah. Unless I got the flu. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm, like, so, I'm I know she's couch. sick when she's in bed. That that is the sure sign that she's not feeling good. So yeah. so we, we witnessed that two weeks ago and now this week is the dental. So it's one thing after another, it's like crap. Mm, so that deserved a crap <laughs> <laughs> so I worked a little bit on the lentilla which is the Martina Bem pattern which I love 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 this is the, in the dancing yes we're dancing dancing dog dye works in the uh, you almost had me say the jelly bean colorway. You got me because <laughs> you say it looks like jelly beans. I haven't said that in a while. Love this my nomies. You just got to look at the bag, the, the project bag that it's in. This is just makes me that. so happy. And this is done on Knit Picks, size 3 fixed. And my, see my Dicky Doo blends in. It's right there. So I did one, two, three, four of the... Uh, little rainbow ridges. How <laughs> do you like that? Rainbow <laughs> ridges. This, I'm doing this for the Notable Needle and Kate and Silly Fru of the Sassy Pants Knitter Podcast. 
and they're having a hitch a rainbow and I have till June 30th to get this done so but I'm on the decrease section now so yeah. past couple nights though I just haven't wanted to knit at all well, it's hard to hold an ice pack to your face and knit, you know, you know, because you can't put pressure either, you know. I told her for the podcast I was going to put a big old bandage around her head. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. She's, she's hanging in there. Yeah. No. The doctor, the dentist actually, my next appointment for the other half of this is until eight weeks and I'm like eight weeks and he goes well that's how long it's going to take you to heal and I'm like you didn't tell me this he goes I know you wouldn't have come back <laughs> <laughs> nice guy yeah Actually, no, he's, he's a, very he's, nice he's a good dentist he gave me uh, flowers after my appointment a bouquet and so I plurked the picture of that so yeah they're good up everybody there. wants to come out here to go to the <laughs> dentist now <laughs> My next thing on the needle is um, Wendy Knits Pattern, Wendy Johnson. She's having the Summer Solstice Mystery Shawl Along. Shawl Along? <laughs> Sean, it sounds like Shana Na Na Shana Na. Always a musical know, interlude here. Came. So we got Clue One the other day, but I just did it yesterday. I think yesterday. I was up. Oh, yeah, you said you had yeah. to cast on a, a lot 200, of... 200, I know this is a paid-for pattern, but big deal about the cast. 277 stitches. I'm doing this in Knit Pick Stroll Summer Blooms Tonal. A nice, bright, hot pink. pink. Well, people always are all wondering how I pick. Summer Blooms. <laughs> Summer Solstice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an I insight, am weird. An insight into yes. the the project yes. mechanics. And so. it's in my happy chicken. bird leg chicken bag. I just love this one. And uh, so we got clue one. And uh, so I cast on all the mini stitches and then I transferred it over to... Because uh, I actually cast on a long tail cast on with uh, two sizes bigger. And this is a five, so six, seven. So I cast on, so on a size seven. I put stitch markers on every 18 because the repeat is every 18 stitches. Because then when I'm doing, you know, I know how to read my knitting, but when I'm watching TV, it's so much easier to have the to... stitch markers say, uh oh, I did, I missed a yarn over. There should be 18. Just to be able to quickly glance down. Because I know some people, oh, you know, I'm an advanced knitter. I don't use stitch markers. That sounded kind of Dracula-y, didn't it? But, you know, <laughs> if it makes your life easier, use them. So, plus they're so pretty. Maybe if I actually showed it to you, you might see that, huh? It's so bunched up on here, though. So, this is... Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like it's showing that much. So I still need one more row and my first whole clue is done. So there's not much showing here. And I've chosen to do the noops, the three stitch noop. You, you have a choice of either using beads, a three stitch noop, or a five stitch noop. And I chose a three stitch noop because on my Lady Edith, that you saw last week that I worked on last week, I'm doing that as a five stitch noop. And them noops aren't that fun. They really slow down your knitting. In the Lady Edith, it, it doesn't slow down as much because she has you on your following row pick up. Oh, this is where you said you have to go back from the front to the back to kind of This do. one, you... You do your three stitches for your noop. You turn it around. You purl those three stitches. Then you turn it back around and you knit the stitch. So it's it's fiddly and your yarn gets tangled up. And hmm. so yeah, the noops aren't so fun, but they make the little booby 
<laughs> the nipply things. <laughs> when it's blocked, they're not yeah. so nipply, but right now they're they're nipply. <laughs> <laughs> Our terminology is well, you gotta love it. Yeah. Dance bumps. Dingleberries. Bumps. 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 Little bobbles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Decor Tiny bobbles. Ornate decorations. <laughs> yeah. So First AKA clue. nipples. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to me to name things. <sighs> See, it's just things that pop into my head. So I don't know when the next one, the next clue comes out sometime this week. So. Now, in terms of spoiler alert, is there much that they can get from what you showed them, or is it that they it's don't even? Because it's a mystery. Oh. They don't. Some people don't want to see yet. Some people wait till they got two or three clues and then start. Oh, in. I got you. But oh. then usually they do that because they peek to see if they even like it. No. Oh. Okay. And I know Stephen West is having a mystery one too, and I did it last year, but I I have so many patterns. I just yeah, like you got a lot of. I can't add anymore. <laughs> this just was a spur of a. Ooh, I don't know why. Why I don't know why. I don't know why I did it. Hmm. Just cause. Just cause. And you don't have. Nothing in your coop? I don't, well, I don't have You have you an wanna, upcoming I, in the coop. I, I didn't know if you wanted to cover this now because this will be in the coop probably today at some point. Um, I haven't started. Okay, last week I mentioned that I, I'd be finishing up my um, cloth, and for, which I did, and I'll talk about that in the flown the coop segment. But I mentioned that I, okay, well, Help me out with what what my next project is, or, or Don may have mentioned that. So, um, got some feedback in terms of that. So, I actually the reason one of the things I want to do with my next project is to learn to read a pattern, and also learn design elements to figure out how the different design things happen in a pattern, so that I uh, that my mind thinks about how things are put together. So, if I understand how things are put together, then I can actually you know figure out how to use that. And you know, come up with my own variation on that. So I wanted to uh, have a pattern that actually did that. So um, I actually have two different. Uh, I'll actually be starting two different projects. Um, one of them is for Don. I'm actually going to knit something for Don, um, which is uh, Zuzu petals. Is that? Mm -hmm. And it's like a, a shawl cowl, I guess, is yeah. the best way to describe it. And that was gifted to me by um, Blue Ruin, which is Sadie of the Yarnivore podcast. Yeah. So I'll actually be knitting that for Don. And I'm going to use, Don picked out the yarn uh, that I'll be well, doing Well, you this said, thing. ooh, I really yeah. like that Madeline well, Tosh tart. What well, can I <laughs> use that for? Oh, is that what I said? <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So funny how I forgot that. Actually, I do love this. I'll actually be doing it out of the Madeline Tosh Tarte um, yarn, which we picked up on our yarn crawl. I just really love the way this is dyed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's got like a core of that deep pomegranate red, and it's just like on the outside is this that dark um, yeah. color. And, and it just it appeals to me. I like red. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but I'll be I'll be casting that on, and I'm losing the stitch marker here that was on there. Um, so, but Madeline Tosh part. I don't know if you can see that if it makes a difference, but it's uh, 225 yards a DK weight. So, um, and I'll be using my my yeah. <laughs> Don's <laughs> sacred uh, signature. Uh, um, size six. Size six needles. So I got to figure out how to use these. I'm moving up from my plastic and metal uh, uh, yarn needles to these uh, turbos. Right? I'll, I'll knit twice as fast mm -hmm. with the uh, with those. So, anyways, it's not cast on yet. So technically, it's not in the coop, but it's almost it's in the coop. Up it's it's to on, it's at the door. And then the the next one. That's we haven't got to that part to show it. 
Okay, well, we'll get, we'll That's get to that. Yeah. The, the other one is I'm just, because then this is more about uh, increases, decreases type thing, no real pattern. I'm actually going to do um, a hat. So I think, I think there was a, a couple suggestions that I do a hat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to jump off into socks yet, uh, but I thought I'll do a hat. And this I don't think has much of a pattern. I think it's got uh, some ribbing it looks like in the design, but I didn't want to get into a, an intricate pattern. And two intricate patterns and get confused about what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so I thought oh, I'll have the, I'll, I'll do the, the shawl cowl which will have more of the design elements, and then I'll do the, the hat, which has actually got more of like the, how to do the increase, decrease stuff. Um, more of a not, relaxed knit, so you don't have to think so much. Yeah, I have to keep track of what I'm doing, so. So anyways, but yeah, so that, and actually I'll be showing the yarn I'll be using and coming up. But in the squeal like a pig. But the, the, I'm doing the wide brim, uh, wide ribbed beanie by uh, Wooly, Warmhead. Warmhead. I've done our patterns before. So, so. so that's that's actually what I'll be starting. But that neither of these are cast on, so technically it's not in the coop, but it's at the door. So it's pecking at the yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> so flown the coop. Flown the coop was the biggie. Yeah. The super Finally size. something for me. <laughs> Um, this is the Hugo, the couch potato monster, and, uh, this is a Rebecca Danger pattern in her big book of monster book, and he's finished. Yay. And he takes up... After a truckload of one, fiber fill. At least one and a half bags, because my second bag is a, was that a 50, not 50 pounds, but... It's, no, it's... <laughs> It's huge. It's, yeah, it's it's the super size yeah. filling bag. I know you'd gotten, but because... this took one and a half of one I had already had, so, and it weighs a ton. And so I have the high fiber diet because Karee gave gifted me this yarn and even saved my butt with the little bit so I can do his arms and stuff. So he that's high fiber diet. Karee knows, <laughs> and I made his mouth happy because. I like the happy monsters. Uh, I kitchenered the top, which you can't see because I put hair on him. He just needed some style. The modification on the arms is once they were knit, I actually got my chippy needle and wove in and out and I cinched it so it's more of a Oh, it moves around. Uh, yeah, it's not a stiff arm or just where it just looked more army. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he yeah. has to be pulled clear back to here to show him in the precise comparison. Here's yeah, Fuji. here's Fuji. <laughs> it's, it's huge. So yeah, she checking out the buttons. Yeah. So I got some of my buttons on here. Jimmy was laughing that I didn't have a wolf arm button on here. So. He's huge, and I guess I could even <laughs> button, put, the back. button his butt, but yeah. So he's finally done. I think mm. these were 18 millimeter eyes. I think those were the biggest ones I had. So he's a happy podcast button. <laughs> button monster. Button monster, yep. Yep. So, whew. I mean, it, it weighs a ton. It's your workout. Yeah. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Fuji's like, wow, I could use that as a bed. I know. <laughs> and for his hair, I just, I made uh, fringe and uh, attached it through and pulled it and styled it. And, yep. Cool. So, Hugo. Hugo, huh? I guess, uh, hi, Fuji. <laughs> what flew your coop? What flew my coop? Well, I was working on my cloth, and I did actually wrap that up. It's curly because we haven't blocked it or anything yet. And I do intend on uh, felting this once to get the uh, the cloth to be more, I guess, uh, blended together because this this will be a photo demo thing that I want to do. So, but it is, it is finished. I haven't uh, tied in or weaved in my ends yet. I still got to do that. But 
Um, so, yeah, it uh, came out pretty good. No issues other than right at the beginning where I learned about yarn overs. <laughs> I can't. Or oh yeah. No, put in your needle to the front. And oh yeah. That, well yeah. Well that's. Yeah. I learned about yarn overs yeah. because I was doing it wrong, but I got a little little mess up there. But so yeah. The so that will take care of that too, though. Oh, okay. It'll hide it. Good thing I've got a an expert uh, knitter here to help me out. But yeah, so that that's all done, and so I'll be working. Working, moving forward on that, felting and whatnot. Yeah. So. so I'm gonna do a little bit of the shawl show, and uh, this week's designer. Right now, I'm just because I've knit so many. <laughs> I'm kind of a shawl addict. Um, this week's designer is Stitch Nerd. She has a group on Ravelry that I'll have linked in the show notes, which are on Ravelry. She is Susan Ashcroft Designs, and uh, these, this is a, okay, I'll do the one that's not a test knit. This is her TJV, TGV, blah, 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 blah. I call it my Polar Express if you're looking on my project page. Um, this was actually done in, oh, I didn't write any of the yarns down. It's Polar Express. The, the dyer doesn't dye anymore. It's uh, TV Yarns. Yeah, I remember the... It's on my project page. I, I have a lot of her stuff because I love it, but she doesn't dye anymore. So this is the TGV, which is an awesome, fun pattern. I love this, and I wear this a lot because it's great for... Uh, Oh, it's, it's got the ribbing and stuff right yeah. there on the edge. And her patterns are all designed where it doesn't matter what yardage you have, you do it in a percentage. So she will mm. tell you, okay, knit 60% of your yarn, for example, and save 30% for, let's say, the edging or whatever. So it's really cool to knit her patterns. You know, this is a wonderful just relaxing knit to this TGV. So this is one of her designs. I've done test knitting for her and this is one of them which is the Love Train which also knittables once the pattern came out had a knit along for. And it has little heart. Oh yeah, a little heart design there. So this is called the Love Train. I might have named this one something different too, I don't remember. And this was done with Numma Numma in the black cherry colorway. It's, I love these, and they're the crescenty. <laughs> you want me to hold yeah. it? It might help <laughs> <There>. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so it drapes really nice on your shoulders, and so they're fun. I like the color of that one. Mm -hmm. Fuji's really wanting <laughs> to play on the couch today. So this was a test knit. Another test knit I did for her was the Seaside Fling. And I call this my mint chocolate chip cupcake. <laughs> this is done in Bee Mice, Bee Mice Elf, um, BFL. Oh, what did she call it? She called it something beach. The color was something beach. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I have no idea. So this is the Seaside Fling. Which I told Lauren, she just got some yarn that this would look really pretty in the other day. So you can see the... Because she called those little edgings seaside flinging <laughs> and they look like <laughs> little cupcakes to me <laughs> and so it's like so that's this one's quite bigger i had a lot of yardage so yeah. i don't think i've even worn this one except on the podcast once hmm. yeah it don't even match that does it yeah, it does hmm. i think it'd go along fine yeah if it and, wasn't uh 90 degrees out um <laughs> yeah and then her uh, like the TGV comes in a, 
well, you can buy it separately, but it also comes in a uh, ebook, so you can get four of her patterns. And, and I have practically all of her patterns. I just haven't had time to, to knit them all. I, in fact, <laughs> I even have the Hogwarts. I'm sure you guys have all heard that pattern. It's the one with the little owls on the edging. And I'm doing the in, or I was before it went in timeout. A Pigeon Roof Studios Winter Birch colorway. And it is all tangled because it's been hibernating. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I, because I got to uh, I got to where the owls need to go on. Oh, is <laughs> this where we were trying to figure out on the pattern how yeah, where to, to space start? My and... owls, yeah. And I just never went back to it. Oh, here's my Chiaogu <laughs> size fives. <laughs> they disappeared. And yes, I, Diane and I, knittables, were laughing because we, our pins in our bags have to match. And my stitch marker, it's a, a little owl. <laughs> uh, Coordinated. Yeah. Coordinated, yep. So yeah, one of these days this will be finished. It just got to that point and it like went in the bag and... All these other projects started, and yeah. there she went. So that was a little Susan Ashcroft Stitch Nerd little show for you. And they're really, I love her patterns because you can go grab any skein and, oh, it'll work. You know, it's like yeah. so yeah. many, oh, man, that calls for 497 yards and your skein is 425 or whatever. And it's like, well, pfft can't use that you know it gives yeah, yeah. the guessing out of it you just oh I it love works that for mm. whatever yarn yeah so so they're really fun I, I want to do more of this one the TGV it's such a fun and it's such a perfect little size too so cool. voila <laughs> so it's fun because I was like hmm and these were all out I didn't even have to go into my yeah. bucket <laughs> yeah, hey, we haven't gotten to the bucket yet, huh? Yeah, well, the the left side knits one were in the bucket, mm. but cause then I thought, ooh, I've got to strategize knowing which ones I've actually shown on the podcast. Have to make notes, huh? Yeah, actually read the show notes again. <laughs> so, squeal like a pig. I can't do the real high squeal like a pig this week. Uh, I've got such nice comments this week, and... Everybody's like, I've had a heck of a month. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to thank you guys for the comments. And even Michelle Dancing Dog Dye Works has sent me little pictures of Emma and, and Henry to make me smile. And, and speaking of Michelle, she spoils me rotten, you guys. I think she airlifted this over because... I had the procedure done on Thursday. This was in the mailbox Friday. Oh. I mean, yes, she's in Fresno, California, but wow. She's, look at this card. Oh my gosh, look at that card. Oh, I would just love to be surrounded by a whole bunch of little baby chihuahuas. Little baby puppy birds. Because she just got a, a baby chihuahua. Yeah, Henry, yeah. yeah. That's a lot like Fuji color, color yeah. wise. Except Henry has the black. Dark. He's got the black and nose. And Fuji has the, the lighter. tan. She sent me a Kraken button. And a stitch marker. Which has her dancing dogs on it. And then she sent me a twist sock. 400 yards superwash merino in the for the love of merlot and this is one of her new colorways she even had a contest on her group dancing dog dye work group on ravelry for you to uh, pick the name and you pick summer garden or yeah to me, so when I, I pulled this out he goes oh you got the garden. summer garden one <laughs> because well to me, I, I, because when the, she had the naming contest, I look at that as like, okay, there's eggplant and there's, you know, the, the 
cucumber and the zucchini and so because when we have a garden, this is a lot of the colors yeah. that are in here are in our garden from the different plants, and that's that's what it reminded me of. Granted, you know, that's not the name that was selected, but that's the first thing that I think of when I see those colors. Yeah. Just so uh, it'll be the garden, <laughs> and then something else was in that package. Yes, there was. What was? You're just sitting there. Oh well. A note. <laughs> For Jean. Yeah, so she to knit a hat. Yeah, so I already showed you my my wide ribbed beanie pattern that I'll be actually using the Dancing Dog Dye Work coffee yarn that she sent. So thank you very much, Michelle. I appreciate that. This will look nice in the hat when I get it done. But this is the um, uh, 85% superwash merino, 15% uh, Donegal Nep. Donegal Nep. It's her Tweety base and it's yeah. an Iran weight, Aaron weight. Yeah, so if you can if get that focused in, you can see the it's got the, the tweed in there. So that'll look really nice with the hat once it's all done up. So. And it's neat because the tweeds that I have seen have always been like red, blue, yellow tweed flex and this is it matches it's you know cream darker brown it it, it matches the colors yeah. you know it's not ooh so yeah it's so neat looking thank you that'll get casted on with my my beanie project so um, you'll see that going yeah that along you'll probably the... be using a knit picks interchangeable size nine <laughs> I already got them out because I yeah, can't I'm, find my eights anywhere. Can't find your eights. They're probably on a project that's in time out somewhere. <laughs> that uh, it was time to go on to yeah. the next step and it just stopped there. But thank you very much. I'm squealing like a Randy. You're squealing like a Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a couple patterns. One of them is, uh, was from Knit Knack NVA, which is Nancy. And she sent me the uh, Ekin Carton. You pronounce an N, not R? Hmm. Where? Oh, Canton. Okay. It means corners and edges in German. Yeah. Ja, <laughs> das ist sehr gut. <laughs> wow, honey. <laughs> I, I, I took five years of German in school, and I very seldom ever get to use it, so there you go. <laughs> You've used it quite a bit on here. I know. This Look is a that. Martina Bim pattern, and it is so awesome. You can use even stripy yarn, which got, because I first thought how perfect they both came the same day, but then... When I saw this picture and it's in the stripy yarn, I thought, ooh, I could maybe use my Dancing Dog Dawn yarn. <laughs> so, because I want to see, because it's really cool construction. I probably shouldn't show that because it is, hmm. but it's like you do one triangle one way, one another. It's just all different hmm. corners and edges. That's hence the name. Uh -huh. So, thank you, Nancy. It's really cool. Her patterns are awesome. <clears throat> and then uh, my buddy Susan, also known as Purcell, Pur <laughs> uh, Purple Haze, <laughs> which you might know her better even as the Desert Vista Dye Work Dyer. And she sent me Something Wicked This Way Comes, and this is a Kyla Hurst mm. pattern. Wow. And it has yeah. two different, because this is thick. I don't know if you can see how thick. It's like 20 pages pattern. And uh, you can knit it with a hood, which, no, I don't want a hood. Or you can knit it, you know, this way. And yes, I already know which yarn I want to get. <laughs> and it's a Desert Vista colorway. And it's got to wait till birthday, which is a few weeks. So, because the name goes with the yarn and it goes with the book I'm going to be reading. So it just ties all together. See, it just, these things just fall into place. That's how I know 
Ooh, which yes, yarn, the which right, pattern. The right combination when it just is all... But I had to together. tease Susan, and she didn't even realize the name. Something wicked this way comes because... I, and I go, yeah, wicked in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she wasn't thinking the name with the... I had to give the her a Dennis heart. with his syringe. Yeah, yeah syringe every see. 10 minutes. Yeah. Not fun. So... Yeah. So, <laughs> does that wrap up our squeal like a pig? Yeah, I'm done squeal <coughs> squealing. Okay, so why don't you take a break and rest your, on the farm. rest your jaw a bit. And I know I'll you go keep into, making me smile and I'm going to be like... Yeah, ice pack after the show. So, yeah. um, Anyways, the last, last episode I had talked about composition and the rule of thirds. <clears throat> and uh, I was going to try and include as part of that uh, also the... Leading lines. Uh, part of uh, composition is is placing things in your picture so that the viewer, um, you kind of are helping the viewer direct their attention to what you want them to see. And one of the ways to do that in composition is to, if your if your image has some strong lines in the subject matter, to use those to direct your viewer's attention. And so I think I've actually, I mentioned this, I think a couple times over some of my old picking on the farm ones, because this is something that if you have lines in there, that's a way of actually getting your viewer to kind of direct their attention. You can help them by, you know, lining up these lines or, or structuring the composition to incorporate those lines in a way that kind of directs their attention around the image itself. So, uh, I know with the the window light demo that I had done on the uh, picking on the farm segment, I think this is one of the first ones. Is one of the sh the shawl images actually has a really strong the edge of the shawl actually it, I believe it is this this shawl here. When I was lining it up, I was actually uh, structuring the picture so that the edge actually kind of you kind of set it up so it's kind of in a wavy pattern, but it gets your the viewer of the image to kind of follow their eye will follow that um, their eye I will tend to follow these things so this works in like you're you're setting up your knitting your patterns projects and stuff taking pictures of those and you know taking pictures of scenics and that sort of thing still lifes there, there's things that always have lines so if you have a line you can kind of tie it in uh, oftentimes uh, if you can crop around that or set it up so that these lines lead from a corner into the center of the picture where your subject is or that sort of thing. I know with the, uh, when I was showing my uh, knitting machine, <laughs> when I was doing my hot dog or the pickle, uh, I, I had shown some pictures, but basically the picture starts you know from down the corner it has objects that bring you in to direct your attention towards the knitting machine and um, so those are things that keep in mind when you're setting up a picture if you have some strong lines in there to utilize those to have your viewer follow those to the subject matter uh, in like landscape uh, even just simple I do I, I overdo my snapshots when we're out um, on vacation and stuff. So one of the pictures I have is Don and Jimmy, you know, they're actually taking a picture and I took a picture of them taking a picture, but there's a, a strong line of, of hedges that lead you from the corner right up to where they're at and that kind of directs the attention. And I had some uh, other pictures that I wanted to kind of show. These, these I don't have an electronic version, so, but just the strong lines you know, in this image here with the um, the stem of the flower coming in from the corner into the flower, you know, that kind of, the eye will follow that, you know, and it kind of, it gets the picture to be more active. It's not a static image. You, if the eye is moving, then that means the viewer is interacting with it. So these lines help keep the viewer actively engaged in the picture. So... Um, I had a, grabbed a couple other ones. This is one that was actually on the Jimmy uh, Happy Birthday Farmer Jim one. But roll of thirds, he's actually off to the side. 
but the, the lines from the tricycle handle that he was sitting on, they all bring the attention to him. Um, but the way it's laid out and everything, it's following this rule of thirds that we talked about last week. But, but those lines all lead to him. And then in landscape, there's not always strong lines, but I, I've shown this a couple times, but the, the river flowing, um, you know, it, it, it actively makes the viewer participate with the picture. So composition, that's part of what composition's about, is actually getting, you know, an, a pleasing structure to the picture, but also making sure that the viewer is engaged with the picture. You know, if you have a picture thing dead center in the center, it, it, it'll get passed over by the viewer pretty quickly because it's really, it's not engaging them. Where the lines, they're actually following along, actually will be more of a uh, attention getter, pleasing to, the, pleasing to look at and interactive. So just a quick, uh, that kind of summarizes my picking on the farm segment, but keep those things in mind when you're taking pictures, if they're, if you can kind of incorporate the lines that are there. And when you're just out, Flicking, flicking, you know, flicking. <laughs> flicking on the farm. When you're out just snapping pictures, you actually think of these lines and stuff? My... I don't think that I've, way. I, well, here's the difference. I've been, actually, I, I've been taking pictures since I was a kid. I had a camera in my hand when I was about six years old, and I've always been into photography. So over the years, probably at the beginning had no clue, you know, nobody ever sat down and taught me any of these things. But uh, over the course of time, either naturally or through the classes that I've taken in photography and going through critiques, one of, the, one of the best things in photography classes, at least at the higher end, is when they actually have um, critiquing. And I, 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 I that, yeah. the critiquing part, you can take a picture, but if you never hear back from what other people see in that picture, it's hard for you to learn how to improve your images. And so I did uh, college level photography classes where part of every project was a critique. And so you, you lay out all your pictures and everyone goes through them and you kind of give your intent what you were trying to do and then everybody gives how they're reading that and you know what worked for them, what didn't work for them. But you, you know it's, it's kind of you can't really get that feedback without presenting it in a critique forum. So you get, you put it out there and then people will look at it and tell you and you learn from that and that's where you improve. But because I go through all this and you learn from people and say this worked or this didn't, in my mind that stays in my mind. So every time I set up a picture, these, the, those gears are turning, you know, so yeah, that's just a little well, probably more information than you wanted to know, but <laughs> but at, over time you kind of condition yourself to do these. It's like knitting. Right now I struggle trying to do the knitting. You know, I have to think about it. You know, there's the the knitters that have been doing it forever. Just you know, mm -hmm. you sit here and you know they'll knock out a row in no time at all. I'm still here trying to you know trying to get mm -hmm. all of that to work. Mm -hmm. it, after you condition yourself, it becomes more natural or, or it'll occur um, just as you know it, it's just part of the process and one of the things that the way I take pictures I actually take pictures with view cameras um, and there is much more time involved in getting things set up and positioned to take one picture one frame you click and that's done but it takes an immense amount of time and thought before you do that so uh, digital cameras are great because you get immediate feedback and you can, you know, they, they say, you know, you shoot a thousand and you get one good one out of that, you know. My mentality is take the time to do one good one and you don't have to shoot a thousand. And so, uh, so before when, you know, I do digital and I do film, when I'm doing view camera photography, I don't know until I get back to the dark room whether it ever turned out and that's that's what it's exciting it's fun to do that but you have to do a lot of prep work and think about what you're doing 
you know, he's where digital is, you click and, oh, did I get it? You know, mm -hmm. and okay. So for wedding photographers, digital is great because you get immediate feedback. I didn't like wedding because I was doing it back in the day when, with film and, and you yeah. don't know you got the, the moment <laughs> until you're actually developing the film and that's stressful. Um, now with digital, it's, it, you can get immediate feedback so I can see how that'd be a lot better. I just don't like doing the wedding stuff, so. But yeah, that's right. We we you were doing it with film. Yeah. That's because I was I was the assistant. You know, <laughs> tossing him the things. You know, and yeah, that's yeah. Uh, <sighs> so. <laughs> in the arena, there's a couple new uh, charities I wanted to mention: um, Apple Blossom and Apple Blossom and You podcast and Jr. Crochet Designs are still doing the Click for Babies that runs till October. Uh, Sock Bunny with her recovery buddies. She's extended it because she wants to knit, a, I think, three. So until she knits three, hers is going to be extended. So you can find that in the charity group, charity thread in the Wolf Farm group, and in their groups. A new one, Jay Paled of the Knitting in Brooklyn podcast uh, contacted me to see if I would mention this uh, charity. I'm getting all tongue-tied. Her cousin, Julie, who is also S. Child Kraut on Ravelry. This info is also in the charity thread. She's a seventh grade teacher in a high poverty area in Brooklyn, New York, and she's established a page on the DonorChoose.org, which is an online community connecting people with classrooms in need. For her classroom, she's in need of books and uh, for her incoming students this coming year. Um, Jay Pellet's trying to sponsor her classroom and she's offering a couple prizes in her group. And you can hear all about this on her podcast. I think she mentions it on episode 14, Knitting Brooklyn podcast. Um, the, her cousin's goal is to reach $407. That's, you know, she's going to run this incentive until that goal is met or until the end of August. Um, all her info is in her group. So I just wanted to mention this so you can go help her out. And, you know, if the incentive is to win some prizes, she's doing the Alana Dacos and Hannah Fettig Coastal Kids Collection as a prize, and I'm sure she'll get some other prizes donated, and so cool. wanted to mention that. Also, I was contacted by <clears throat> Quilter Caroline, and this info is in our group. <laughs> <laughs> and I first chuckled, but then I went and researched this and read about it, and it just breaks your heart. In the this is a charity in the UK. I haven't found anything within the US. I think we have strict guidelines here mm -hmm. on animal cruelty that you know there's a lot of regulations been, yeah, when it comes to uh, uh, industrial farming and that sort of and thing. And this is a charity to help knit for chickens. <laughs> uh, they knit little jumpers which in the US we call them sweaters. Um, I just love the jumpers. <laughs> uh, for they're called X battery chickens. X battery chickens are where they've been in these teeny tiny little things. They never see the light of day. They just have a light bulb. They ju they're just producers. They either kill each other. They starve to death. They they, they lose all their they feathers. Basically, work these chickens twenty four hours a day yeah. for a whole year t as egg producers and. Yeah. No concern. The environment is very poor, and so these chickens, they don't have feathers. I mean, it's... Yeah, so, so if they get rescued by... I have the links. Little Hen Rescue is a rescue in the UK. They knit these little sweaters. They're, I put a crochet and a knitted version on the group. I thought it'd be fun just to fashion plate <laughs> my chickens, but uh, you can knit these, and it keeps them warm until their feathers come back. So they're not naked chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to knit one just to, just to... I'll have to knit one and show you because it's so cute. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, sad it's not that cute, it's sad, but I mean, it's sad that, they, yeah, that, that it's there's a need that they treat, treat chickens 
you know, so yeah. poorly. Um, well, it makes you but it's, wonder it, what else they do it's, to it's, their beef and, you know, all the other. It's great that there's people out there that have a, a passion for that to go and, and help them out and enough to knit things that will help make their life better, seeing that they've, you know, a whole year of being locked up in a little cage. Yeah, just sometimes to even longer. You know, so. So, and the ones that they rescued, they've even are still able to produce but you know yeah but now they're be happy chickens so well, let's round we're doing what the duck at all and... no because we're uh, time okay. we gotta add in we're running stuff. out of time we're running so. out of time <laughs> tour de fleece is coming up starting june 30th so get your wheels ready your spindles ready and all your fiber prepped and we'll be hitting that until july 22nd so mm -hmm. uh our hatching it ends next week too. So get your June pictures in there and the Lady Edith Cal is still going on. So until next time. Let's get cracking. And hatching it. Bye, Bye y'all. <laughs>